Chapter 4 Doctrines of Devils, 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Spirit speaketh expressly very descriptively. 1 Samuel 20, verse 21. And behold, I will send a lad, saying, Go, find out the arrows. If I expressly say unto the lad, Behold, the arrows are on this side of thee, take them. Then come thou, for there is peace to thee, and no hurt, as the Lord liveth. Ezekiel 1 verse 3. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chebar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. The latter times Paul is not speaking about the last days of Israel's prophecy program, but the latter times of the dispensation of grace leading up to the blessed hope, also known as the rapture by believers today. The last days of Israel's prophecy program ended with their blinding as a nation in the early Acts period as the dispensation of grace was ushered in with Paul and his epistles for the body of Christ. Those last days will resume only after the church is taken away in the rapture and the time of Jacob's trouble begins. Some shall depart from the faith their faith has not left them but they are now preaching something that will not save the hearers of their new message. This does not mean they lose their salvation, but rather they now are preaching a doctrine that has departed from what is correct for this age, and in that sense, they have left the faith. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devil's people would leave sound doctrine when enticed by seducing spirits working through people who bewitch them with their doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy 4 verses 2 to 5 speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Acts 10 verse 15, And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed that call not thou. Common, speaking lies and hypocrisy, the identifying characteristics of these false teachers is their doctrines that forbid marriage and their commanding of God's people to abstain from meats which God had created to be received with thanksgiving conscience seared with a hot iron to render their conscience unsensitive. Priests are forbidden to marry today in some groups which is totally contrary to the scriptures as even Peter himself had a wife and a mother-in-law. Priests rarely question this teaching because their conscience has been seared by their seducing spirits that give them their doctrines of devils. 1 Timothy 4 verse 6 If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. A good minister of Jesus Christ, we are to warn our people as pastors about the fallacies of these people who have been deceived in order to be considered in God's eyes as a good minister of Jesus Christ. Good doctrine, we are to nourish the church up in the words of faith and the good doctrine that Timothy received from Paul. 2 Timothy 1 verses 13 to 14, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. Acts 20 verses 25 to 31. And now behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day, that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember 
that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. First Timothy 4 verses 7 to 8, but refuse profane and old wives fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Spiritual exercise is the studying of God's word concerning doctrine, as well as how we ought to behave and the refusing of false teachings and profane old wives' fables that are constantly passed down from generation to generation. We have too many people today who are spiritual wimps because they do not exercise their faith in defending it and they let the devil spread their doctrines without so much as a challenge. 1 Timothy 4, verses 9 to 11. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe whether the lost receive Christ as their Savior or not. It does not change the fact that that is Jesus is the Savior of men. He is more of a savior to those of us who have believed and received the salvation that he has wrought for us than he can be to someone who has rejected it. 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Timothy was not to let those who would claim he was too young to know any better to despise his youth as long as he was a living example of what a bishop and pastor ought to be. He was put in that position by God, and unless he was immature and irresponsible, those who were his senior were to respect the office he held and follow their leader. First Timothy 4, verse 13, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Bishops should be avid readers of the scriptures. Should we read other men's writings? Yes, of course, but the amount of scripture being read should far outweigh the amount of man's writings we read. Commentaries can be good, but never come to the place in your ministry that you skim through the scriptures in a commentary to get to what man has written. Ask God what his word means and do. Searches throughout the scriptures on different subjects. No nugget of truth is more precious than the one you dug out yourself. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. The gift that was given thee, N.D. Timothy 1, verse 6. The laying on of the hands of the presbytery, these gifts were not being given to the body of Christ after Israel's blindness was set in only before. This gift was needed by the church there and God gave the presbytery the knowledge that they were to bestow it on a younger Timothy. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Do you meditate on what God's word means? Do you give yourself wholly unto them? If you do not, it will show and it will appear obvious to all that hear you. It is a profitable thing to give the word of God its proper place in your studies and in your ministry. You will profit and your people will profit because of it. First Timothy 4 verse 16, Take heed unto thyself, and unto the doctrine continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Thou shalt save thyself and them that hear thee. They could save them and their people a lot of trouble if they would take heed to these things. Salvation is not in consideration here. Chapter 5, Denying the Faith. 1 Timothy 5 verses 1 to 2, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity, an elder and older person. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 3 to 6, Honor widows that are widows indeed. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to shew piety at home and to requite their parents for that is good and acceptable before God. 
Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and continueth in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Honor widows that are widows. Indeed, pastors should teach their congregation to take care of their family members and to seek assistance if needed. They are to honor them with financial assistance. If they are widows, indeed, those who meet the qualifications listed below. Let them learn first to shew piety at home. Children were to shew respect to their widowed mother or aunt to take care of their needs to requite them as they once did them. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 7 to 8. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. He hath denied the faith, he hath denied what God has said he should do in this area, and he is treating his own family worse than the lost infidels treat their widows. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 9 to 10. Let not a widow be taken into the number under threescore years old, having been the wife of one man, well reported of for good works, if she have brought up children, if she have lodged strangers, if she have washed the saints' feet, if she have relieved the afflicted, if she have diligently followed every good work, taken into the number, taken into the number of widows that the church has to help, because there is no family who can do it. Three score years old, 60 years old. First Timothy 5 verse 11. But the younger widows refuse for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry to wax wanton against Christ, they begin to adopt sensual ways to attract men instead of being a godly example. First Timothy 5 verses 12 to 15, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith. And with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies, speaking things which they ought not. I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. For some are already turned aside after Satan. Having damnation because they have cast off their first faith, they cast off, turned aside after Satan, their biblical teachings to get their needs met by becoming worldly. This is not speaking about one losing their salvation in the dispensation of grace. We are sealed unto the day of redemption. Ephesians 4 verse 30. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. The adversary is ultimately the devil. It can also mean the infidels who would use this to criticize believers in Christ who will not take care of their own family. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 16. If any man or woman that believeth have widows, let them relieve them, and let not the church be charged, that it may relieve them that are widows indeed. Let not the church be charged. They should not let the church take care of their family when they can. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 to 18. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Let the elders that rule well this is speak of a bishop who is an elder. Most elders are not bishops. A bishop and elder who does his job well should receive double that of what it would take to support a widow indeed, because he has more responsibilities to take care of such as a wife and children. Paul is definitely speaking to those with a leadership position in the church because he makes it clear that they are those who rule well. It can also imply here that the pastor is someone with a few years on them. 1 Timothy 5 verses 19 to 20, against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. Deuteronomy chapter 17 verse 6, at the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses, Shall he that is worthy of death be put to death? But at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. Matthew 18, verse 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. 
1 Timothy 5, verse 21. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. Paul charges believers before three witnesses in verse 21 to observe these commandments. The elect angels. These were the angels that chose not the rebel against God and follow Lucifer in his rebellion. So God chose them bear witness to what Paul was telling us. 1 Timothy 5 verse 22. Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins, keep thyself pure. Lay hands suddenly on no man, don't rush to give a new person a position of responsibility in the church, but rather wait a while to see if their spirituality matches up with their zeal. 1 Timothy 5 verse 23, Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake, and thine often infirmities. Drink no longer water, this command was for Timothy, and it was purely for medicinal purposes. Use a little wine for thy stomach's sake. A little wine was good for his stomach because the water was not filtered in those days. This is in contrast to Paul's commands for a bishop not to be given to much wine. 1 Timothy 5. Then some men's sins are open beforehand. Some men's sins are open beforehand going before to judgment, and some men they follow after. Likewise, also, the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. Again, Paul warns Timothy to watch out for those who just show up and want to help immediately, that he should not put them into positions of authority until some time has passed by and they have proven themselves. It is the long-term health of the church that we are to be more concerned with rather than some perceived quick gain we might receive from someone who has just showed up. Chapter 6, Lay Hold on Eternal Life, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 1 to 2. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort servant slaves under the yoke, under bondage. Count their masters worthy of all honor, that the word of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. If they refuse to honor their masters, they are blaspheming the name of God and the doctrine of God will not be believed by that servant who is not following it. Do them service they were to honor them as they serve them. Partakers of the benefit, they are partakers of the good deed done. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 to 5, If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. The doctrine according to godliness, see the mystery of godliness in 1 Timothy 3 verse 16, about Christ living out his word in us and through us. 1 Timothy 6 verses 6 to 12. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows but thou o man of god flee these things and follow after righteousness godliness faith love patience meekness Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Paul is describing a hireling which doesn't care about the church, but about themselves, their stomach, and their comfort. An elder that is over a congregation should be like Christ, and be willing to give himself for his church, instead of looking for what he can get out of them. 
they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. This is speaking about erring from the truth in regards to monetary gain. They no longer teach sound doctrine in this area, and they are producing much sorrow in those who keep trying to follow their false teachings in this area who end up destitute. Man of God, a term given by others to God's servants such as Timothy, not self-imposed on us for our exaltation. 2 Timothy 3 verse 17 Lay hold on eternal life. A person today lays hold on eternal life. The moment he believes the gospel, he then begins to fight the good fight of faith because he now possesses faith. Verse 19. Whereunto thou art also called all who have believed the gospel of the grace of God are called to fight the good fight of faith and to have eternal life. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 13 to 16. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in his times he shall show, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen, nor can see to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Who quickeneth all things he makes alive, which in his times he shall shew when he returns to set up his kingdom. The blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and Lord of lords. While Christ is the head of the body of Christ, he is also going to be seen as the only potentate king and Lord of all on the earth as well. First Timothy chapter six, verses 17 to 19. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Willing to communicate this is in reference to supporting the work of God, as Paul said of the Philippians who alone communicated unto him financially. Philippians 4 verse 15. That they may lay hold on eternal life. Verse 12. 1 Timothy 6 verses 20 to 21. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babbling and oppositions of science falsely so called which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. The first to Timothy was written from Laodicea, which is the chiefest city of Phrygia Pacatiana. Keep that which is committed to thy trust. Paul committed to Timothy the gospel of the grace of God and the fellowship of the mystery. Ephesians 3 verse 8 and 9. Oppositions of science, falsely so-called things which are called science, when there is no science to back them up, like evolution. Theories are just that, theories. They are not science. Evolution is a religion based only on blind faith. These people have erred concerning the faith of God and are now teaching theories of men. The 